Hello, my name is Dean McNeil and I play the trumpet. I play the trumpet in the Saskatoon Jazz Orchestra and in the Saskatoon Symphony Orchestra and I teach brass and jazz related courses at the University of Saskatchewan. Today I'd like to talk to you about a subject which is familiar to most musicians and that is staying motivated in the practice room. Although this video is intended mostly for trumpet players and perhaps brass players, I'm hopeful that it'll be useful to other instrumentalists alike when they find themselves sitting at home wanting to get something done on their instrument but not quite knowing where to start. This is certainly something I've experienced in the past and I hope that my thoughts and suggestions are helpful to you all. First of all, I think the most important thing is that you have a good attitude and you can develop and foster a good attitude in the practice room just like you can work on any other aspect of your playing. And there's some key aspects to this that I'd like to go over with you today. The first thing I'd suggest that you do is you define your creative practice space. The physical space that you're in will have a lot to do with how much work that you can get done. So the first thing I'd suggest that you do is turn off all of your social media, turn your phone off, put your computer away, try to find a quiet space, and hopefully a space that you can't get interrupted very easily, so that you can dive into the creative aspect of music making and improving at music without too many distractions. This doesn't have to be a particularly inspiring space in and of itself. When I was a kid, my parents had a heated garage, so I could go out to the garage and practice my instrument and not be interrupted. And when I was out there, it somehow changed the modality of the thinking that I was in to know that I could get some things done and I wasn't going to be interrupted very easily. You could even just claim a little spot in your room where this could be uh, your practice spot. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Get out your instrument, get out your music stand, get out your music books, get out your metronome and your pencil, a pad of paper, kind of assemble your materials, if you will, uh, before you start practicing. And just getting into this routine of doing this type of thing really will help you, I think, get into the right mode of practice. It'll help you get into the right mindset. In terms of books, there's a list of books that's going to show up here. And these are books that I would suggest that you use. If you're a young player, um, Breeze Easy by John Kenyon, book one and book two, are really great uh, practice books for a number of reasons. And if you're a more experienced player, there's a list of five books there that I would suggest that you get. And these are books that you can use all the way into your university years and beyond. A Comprehensive Approach for the Aspiring Brass Player by Don Johnson. Clark Technical Studies for the Cornet or Trumpet, Conconi Lyrical Studies for the Trumpet or Cornet, Arben's Complete Conservatory Method for the Trumpet or Cornet, and Schlossberg's Daily Drills and Technical Studies for the Trumpet and Cornet. The next thing to do is to spend a little bit of time before you start to practice listening to some really great music. This can help inform your concept of what music excellence can be and it's also a great way of inspiring you to become the best player that you can be. I began this video playing a little excerpt for you from Aaron Copeland's Appalachian Spring. It's from the song, the Shaker's tune, "'Tis the Gift to be Simple." I never get tired of hearing that song, I never get tired of playing it, and I never get tired of Aaron Copeland's beautiful piece of music. Now, at the bottom of your screen in a moment, I'll show you a list of some really great trumpet players that you can listen to. Since this is a Saskatchewan video, some names of Saskatchewan artists that I think are definitely worth checking out are Guy Few, Terry Heckman, who plays in the Ta Saskatoon Symphony, Miles Newman, who plays in the Regina Symphony, Ryan Cole, who plays in the Victoria Symphony, Karen Donnelly, who plays in the National Arts Centre Orchestra, Al Muirhead, who's a wonderful jazz player, and you can find out more information about me at deanmcneil.com. I'll also give you a list of some professional, uh, international trumpet players to listen to, and there is an ample amount of information out there on these people, and of course they are just a very small list of players compared to the many, many wonderful players out there, but they're some of my favorites, and these are the people that I'm often listening to these days. These include Thomas Hooten, uh, principal trumpet in the Los Angeles Philharmonic, Chris Martin, principal trumpet in the New York Philharmonic, Caleb Hudson, first trumpet in the Canadian Brass Quintet, Alison Balsam, Alan Vizzuti, 
Bobby Shu, Time Thing Helson, Jens Lindemann, Thomas Gaunch of the Manozzle Brass, and the wonderful jazz player Ingrid Jensen. Spending just a little bit of time at the beginning of my practice session listening to some of these wonderful players is always a great inspiration to me. I realize what can be done on the trumpet, I realize how many different wonderful ways there are of playing the trumpet, and basically I get excited about the trumpet. And when that excitement starts to happen in me, and I pick up my instrument, I'm far more motivated to get a lot more done in the practice room in positive ways because I'm simply excited about playing music. Listening to music is one of the best teachers that we have. Examples often make the best teachers. The next thing to do is to take a moment to define your goals. Try to establish what it is that you're trying to accomplish within that very practice session. I would suggest that you write these out on a piece of paper. It's amazing, just the physical act of getting someone to write out their goals really makes them confront them and be specific about what they're trying to achieve. I'd suggest that you don't be too ambitious. Don't try to accomplish too much in one practice routine, in one practice session. They can be things like, I want to work on my tone, improve my finger technique, I want to work on the next eight bars of this piece of music. When you make your list, just be realistic. Keep in mind that practicing is a game, and the game is to try to get a little bit better than you were yesterday. And if you can learn to enjoy the game of becoming good instead of focusing on the goal of being good, you're probably going to have a lot more time in the practice room spent in positive ways. The other nice thing about making a practice plan is that as you move through your practice routine, you can check off some of those boxes and it feels really good that you've checked some things off. You've got some things done and that's terrific. There's nothing more frustrating than being in a practice room and kind of meandering around for a while and at the end of the session looking back and saying, what did I really accomplish? Keep in mind that when you're practicing your instrument in a practice room by yourself, you are literally developing and nurturing a relationship with your instrument. I've always felt that the way you end a practice routine, a practice session, has a lot to do with the way you relate to your instrument the next time you pick it up. How you put your horn into the case has a lot to do with the way you think and feel about that instrument when you take it out of the case the next time. So one thing that I always suggest is that when people end their practice routine, do something that's fun. It doesn't have to be the hard thing. In fact, leave the hardest thing that you're going to be practicing about for about two-thirds of the way through your practice routine. And at the end of your practice session, just play something that brings you joy. It could be a favorite piece of music. It could be something that you do well, like a scale or a slur. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't need to be complicated. Um, but something that really makes you feel good about connecting with your instrument. I love doing lip slurs. And I love the way the instrument feels in my hand when I do lip slurs. And I like playing lip slurs. So I'll often end with lip slurs or with doing a little bit of improvising. Regardless of the age that you're at, I would suggest that when you practice, that you first of all try to get to the instrument every day. 20 minutes of playing a brass instrument once a day is far better than trying to practice an hour and a half once or twice a week. Our instrument is such that we need that daily connection to it to keep the muscles that are required, in particular in our face, to be working properly. When you're trying to get to the trumpet every day, within that time period, try to get to the various aspects of playing, like warm up, slurring, fingers, sight reading, working on repertoire, and I would suggest that everybody work on a little bit of improvising every day as well. Even if you're not quite sure what you're doing, just playing your instrument freely or taking a single scale and improvising with it can be a really great way for you to discover all kinds of interesting things about music and your own playing. Now, we haven't talked much about warm-up, and we're going to leave that for another video, and you can check the Saskatchewan Band Association's Clinic Bureau for more uh, videos on how to warm up properly on a brass instrument. To talk just a little bit more about improvisation, there's a few aids out there that can really make improvising fun. And again, you don't have to have a lot of training to allow yourself the opportunity to start playing around with this. There's 
a play-along series for jazz called Jamie Abersold, and they come with books and recording tracks that you can play along with. It's kind of like music minus one. So there's piano, bass, and drums, but no horn player. That's a really great resource. There's also a resource called iReal Pro, and that's uh, an app with a computer-generated uh, rhythm section that you can play along with as well, which is kind of fun. I also like playing along with another app called Cello Drones, or the iTabla Pro. I think you have to pay a little bit of money for these, and they're basically drones uh, that you can play along and improvise with, and they make music making a lot of fun. If you want to try doing a little bit of improvising within your practice routine, just getting one of these things going and just having a little bit of fun playing and getting used to the consonant sound that you're making relative to the app or the dissonant sound that you're making and trying to play back and forth between the two can be a really great way and a great access point into the world of improvisation and into the world of creative music making in a very kind of fun and engaging way. So again, I do tend to do those types of things at the end of my playing to kind of treat myself after working really hard on my other music. If you like some of the things that I'm saying here and you would like to know a little bit more about my thoughts on music, I would invite you, I suppose, to go check out a TEDx talk that I made a little while ago called Please Listen Carefully. The link is popping up at the bottom of your screen now. I love music and all the things that music has done for my life. I love playing music. I love playing in ensembles. I love hanging out backstage with musicians and listening to music. There are many aspects of music that are near and dear to me, but I had to learn how to really enjoy practicing music on my own. I had to learn how to develop a good attitude. And many of the things that we've talked about in this video really have helped me. That's being organized, having a practice plan, having a practice space that I'm uninterrupted in, listening to music, setting little tiny goals for myself, and being kind to myself and not too hard on myself when things are not progressing as quickly as I would like them to. Again, setting very small goals is very, very important. Practicing can be a lot of fun or practicing can be very, very frustrating. It all depends on your approach and your attitude. I really love practicing now because I've finally come to the realization that it's a journey that we're on, not a destination. Again, practicing is a game, and the game is to try to get a little bit better than you were yesterday. And if you can enjoy the process of getting better, of becoming, as opposed to the product of being good, then you're going to be well placed to have a lot of fun in the practice room. And then when you get an opportunity to go back into the ensemble setting and play uh, with people and share your music for people to listen to, you're going to have just an absolutely terrific time with music. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave you playing a little bit of music that I recorded a little while ago with my dear friend Richard Carnegie, who's the principal bassist of the Saskatoon Symphony, and he's the conductor of the Saskatoon Youth Orchestra, two wonderful organizations. And Richard and I are going to play a little song for you, so we hope you like it. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at deanmcneil.com. And I wish you all the very best in your many hours of practice in your studio by yourself as you discover what an incredible instrument this is and what's possible through music. Thank you very much. Thank you.